Tonight, I am absolutely, my name's Taylor, by the way. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, I am uh, excited to get to be able to spend the next 25 minutes with you sharing something that God began to put on my heart actually a couple weeks ago to share with you, and it just keeps kind of getting better. I hope that I can deliver it in the capacity of what I believe that God has given it to me. Uh, So if it's not, that's my fault. God gave me the good stuff, and I just can't deliver it the way it needs to be done. Um, But here's what I'm also going to ask, that tonight um, you, you pull on the anointing. You, you say, God, I want everything that God's got for me. And I'm going to listen. I'm going to be attentive. I'm going to write some notes down. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do what it says. Because the things I'm going to share with you tonight, they work in your spiritual life. They work in a, an arena of different things. They work in your, your career. They work in your business. They work in your marriage. And it's going to be a night that I personally believe you're going to look back and say, there was a, there was a shift in my, in my life that happened on that Wednesday night when that, that crazy guy got up there and just let us worship for a little while. And it's going to be tonight when you're going to be, that was the turning point. Um, How many of us have tried to do something and we did it for a week, we did it for a month, we did it for two months, we did it for six months, and we gave up on it? Yep. Every single one of us have said, you know what, I'm going to do something and I'm going to get all excited about it and I'm going to run and I'm going to do this. And then what happens like after we hit our first roadblock? We start backing up. No, I'm not doing that. I didn't do that. I'm not going there. Have you ever heard of a guy named John Wayne? Yeah, we all know John Wayne. The thing I loved about John Wayne was it didn't matter what situation he was in, he had courage. It didn't matter what was going on. He could have eight guys all in the middle of a dark uh, old western scene. No one's on the streets. It's eerily quiet, and there's eight people sitting up there all with guns at him. And what's he do? Rides in on his horse, just kind of looking around. Nothing's going to phase him. Nothing's going to get in his way. Why? Because he's John Wayne. John Wayne knows he's got courage. John Wayne knows what his capabilities are. And um, what I want us to understand tonight is that uh, we're going to talk on courage one more time. And it's all going to make sense here in a little bit. Whenever we think of courage today, what do we think of? We think of uh, heroic acts, death-defying things, people running into burning buildings. We think of, um, uh, what else do we think of? We think of heroic things. Uh, come on, th- this is not just a one-way speech tonight. What, what do you think of? What? Military. Military. People going in the army. What are some other things that we think of? Courageous people going out and doing great things. What is it? What? Firemen? What? I, I... Roller coasters. I won't get on them anymore. That's right. It takes courage. I'm not doing that. Called out a weakness. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Man, right in front of everybody. Uh, But the truth is, no matter what we're going through, it takes an enormous amount of courage to go through our everyday life. You know, it takes courage to do the right thing. It takes courage to not eat that extra cookie. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, that one hit home right there. Yeah, yeah. We all like the chocolate chips, knickerdoodles, or whatever you guys like. It takes courage to tithe. It takes courage to live in our Christian walk. It takes courage to live in this world that we live in. And what we have to understand is every day we make choices. Some of them are more courageous than others, but every day we're going to make choices. Our decisions that we make are going to be courageous in our walk with God. The decisions that we make will cause us to either become courageous in our walk with God or cause us to do what? to turn from our walk with God. The decisions that we make will cause us to be courageous in our career, to go for that next promotion, even though you're not quite qualified for it, but courage says go for it. But what happens whenever we begin to hear the other voices in our head? What do we do? I can't do that. I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes to do that thing. I believe that courageous people live by commitments. Everyone say commitments, commitments, and we become what we are committed to. If we're going to become what we're committed to, we want to commit to things that cause us to to, to operate in courage. But what is courage? If you're a note taker, write this down. This is good, if I don't say so myself. Courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. 
Courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. We all lose enthusiasm, but what happens, the difference is whenever we become courageous, it doesn't matter if we lose it, we're going to stay committed to that thing that we once thought would get us to where we wanted to go. We have to stick to our commitments. Courageous people live by commitment, and we've got to stick to those commitments. You know, we get married. That takes courage. Do we stick to that? Supposed to. But you know what? When it gets hard, what do we often try to do? We start trying to come up with every reason possible to get our way out. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to do the courageous thing. I'm going to live by my commitments. I made a commitment to my spouse, therefore, therefore I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do as a spouse. We make commitments in our jobs, in raising our kids. It gets tough. There's not a manual. I've got a two-year-old daughter. She came and woke me up at 1 o'clock the other morning. I don't know why she did that. There wasn't a manual that said, hey, this is how you prevent this from taking place. No, she had to tell me something at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> What was it? Hey, Dad, I love you. Thanks. Love you, too. Go back to bed. No, I'm up for a while. There's no manual on how to raise kids, but we have to stay committed to it. Why? Because it took courage to get us to a point when we had our kids. Operating in this life requires us to commit to what we're doing. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? Our Christian life requires what? A commitment. If we are going to live by our commitments, we have to understand that as a, as, a, as, a Christian, as a Christian, there are commitments that we are going to have to surrender and live by. People who live by commitments are changed people. And changed people do what? Change people. People who are changed change people. And changed people change people. Revelations 3 uh, talks about being uh, hot or cold for God. It says, uh, don't be lukewarm, be hot, be on fire for God. When you're on fire for God, what happens? then you're ready to charge hell. It doesn't matter what's coming along your way. When you're excited about what God's doing, you're going you're gonna to have some fun. When you're, when you're on fire for your marriage, what do you want to do? You want to hang out with your spouse. You want to go do fun things. You don't want to ride a roller coaster, but you want to go out and do fun things. <laughs> Whenever you're on fire for God, it causes you to do something that other, thing, other things won't allow you to do. But because you have a fire for God, you don't want to be a weak, sissified, pansy Christian. We want to live by our commitments. We want to live by those things that cause us to be courageous. We want to live by those things that are convictions in us, those things that we committed to when we said yes to the Lord. God is looking for committed, courageous Christians. Let me say this again. God is looking for committed, courageous Christians. Christians. Look at David in the Bible. I know we use him all the time, but man, he's just so good. David fought a what? He fought a bear. Courage. He fought a lion. Courage. He fought Goliath. Courage. He fought Bathsheba. Lost. (laughs) Hmm. Bear, lion, woman. Hmm. (laughs) You guys do the math. You seen those shirts that say Mama Bear? My, my wife, whenever we had our first kid, she's like, I want that shirt because I'm going to raise all hell if you mess with my kid. I was, sorry, side note. <laughs> it said that, that Mama Bear kicked up inside of her. But David, he, he fought the, the bear. He fought the lion. He fought Goliath. And then when Bathsheba came, what happened in Psalms? David is writing, I think, in, uh, I wrote it down here, Psalms 42. As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, Lord. And then the whole Bathsheba thing happened. Most of us know the story. I don't need to reiterate it. And then right after that happens, what's he saying in Psalms 52? Create in me a clean and pure heart. Because David fell victim of sin. But he didn't let his sin victimize him. David fell victim to sin, but he didn't let his sin victimize him. David was committed. I think we would all agree on that. And we all have temporary setbacks that cause us to lose our commitments. But how do we deal with it? Tonight, we want to look at three, because I like the number three, practical aspects of what we understand about living in our commitments. If we're going to live committed lives, we're going to, number one, we've got to understand that strength and courage is required. If we're going to live committed Christian lives, strength and courage is required. Joshua 1.6 says, be strong and courageous. 
We need to first of all understand that being a courageous person is a part of who we are. It's a requirement. What you believe eventually makes you who you are. If you believe you're a no good, rotten, dirty scoundrel, then know what you are? You're a no good, dirty, rotten, something, something, scoundrel, whatever I said. (laughs) If you believe you're a woman of God who walks in integrity, who walks in anointing, then guess what? You're a woman of God who walks in integrity, who walks in the anointing. And I'm not talking about self-identifying with something else. I'm talking about living in your identity with Christ, who he created you to be, a committed person, saying, I'm living by my commitments, and that is I am a child of God. I'm a woman who is a conqueror of more than anything. I live by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. Does does that make sense? Are we understanding this? Okay, so all the people in the Bible... Most of the people in the Bible at some point operated with strength and courage. But you know what? It's not always easy, but they were committed to it. They were committed to the greater cause. They were committed to the outcome, not the situation. Because what happens whenever it gets tough, what do we try to do? We don't want to live by our commitments. We want to live by what feels good. And if it becomes hard, we want to give up. And if we're going to live this Christian life, we've got to live by our commitments. Paul and Silas were in jail. You guys probably know the story. And an angel showed up, unlocked the gate, and they were free. They were committed. If they would have given up, what would have happened? We wouldn't have more than half the New Testament. It was written in prisons. Paul wrote it while being jailed. He wrote it while being thrown in prison. He wrote it by suffering. But because he was committed to the greater cause, because he said, I'm going to operate in courage and not operate in fear and doubt and unbelief, we have most of the New Testament. But at some point, do you think they wanted to give up? I'm going to put myself in a position of total vulnerability. I would have. Going through what they went through, I probably would have given up. But they had the philosophy of what the title of our message tonight is. One more time. Whatever I go through, whatever comes my way, one more time. I'm going to follow after God. One more time, I'm going to be obedient to God. One more time, I'm going to go through some stuff. One more time. There was a man by the name of John Lake in the early 1900s. John Lake was known for being a man of miracles, of healing. Um, He had a successful attorney law office practice and God began to tug on his heart and saying hey I've called you to go to Africa to be a missionary he didn't want to go he had a very good thing going on he fought God for over a year saying I don't want to go to Africa I don't want to be a missionary God said I've called you to do it he said okay God I'm committed to you so I'm going to do it but here's the here's what here's what I'm going to say if this is you you've got to provide every single thing and he he sold his practice gave away everything And he, his wife, and he had a couple of kids at the time, went to the boat with no money and said, God, if you want to go to Africa, if you want us to go to Africa, provide the way. They sat there for 45 minutes, and then a gentleman walks up to him and says, hey, sorry I'm late. I tried to get earlier. God spoke to me and said I was supposed to give you this, and it was one-way tickets all the way to get to Africa. I think he heard God's voice. And he had to go to Africa, and he spent some time over there had great miracles, saw great things, got older in his life, moved back to the States, went to a city called Spokane, Washington. And in Spokane, Washington, John Lake started what they called a healing home. The city officials declared Spokane, Washington the healthiest city in America because of John G. Lake. Do you think the first time he prayed for someone, something happened? Probably not. But the more he did it, the better he got at it. And the better he got at it, the more what happened? He became committed to the calling that God had put upon his life. 
Have you ever heard of a guy by the name of A.A. A. Allen, 1950s? Same thing. Uh, the guy was an alcoholic by the time he was 11, addicted to smoking by 11. His parents, to get him to go to bed, would put liquor in his uh, milk bottles to go to sleep. They were terrible, terrible, terrible stuff to him. God got a hold of him, and what happened? He started a place called Miracle Valley in Arizona. They had schools, they had colleges, they had church services. Thousands and thousands of people got healed. Do you think it happened the first night? No. Because he said, I'm going to be courageous, he operated in a capacity that he was committed to what God had called him to do. These people were no different, are no different than you and I. Some of you have business ideas. Some of you have career goals that you're wanting to accomplish. Some of you have, have education goals, family goals. Are you committed to them one more time? That thing that you gave up on, would you be committed to it one more time? What we have to understand is when God speaks, we have to be committed to having courage. There's a picture of a lion on the screen. Just making sure it's there. <laughs> when you look at that lion, do you think that lion has been through a little bit of a battle? He was committed to winning. That's why he's still here. He was committed to what he had to do. Don't let your battle wounds stop you from your commitments. There is several hundred people in here tonight, and I can promise you we all have battle wounds that no one else in here knows about. We have to choose. Are we going to be committed to what God has called us to do, or are we going to give up? One more Jesus went to battle, and he had scars to prove it. His disciple even wanted to see the scars on his hands and his feet and his side. The battle will sometimes leave scars, but the scars are always in preparation for the next season that's going to come. When we choose to live committed lives, we've got to become courageous. So I ask, you tonight, what's God speaking to you about? That thing that you may have given up on, that thing that's been stirring up in your heart, that's been stirring up on your insides, what battles are you going to be facing? We know they're going to be there. We know they're coming. But are we going to stay committed through the battle? Are we going to stay committed to the calling that God has put upon our lives? In order for us to, to have commitment in our life, in order for us to be courageous, we have to, number one, understand that strength and courage is required. Number two, write this down if you're a note taker, strength and courage is developed. Great people of God don't start off that way. Their faith is developed. Luke 17, 14 says, When they saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the Pharisees. And as they went, they were cleansed. What was taking place is there were ten men who had leprosy. They went to Jesus, and Jesus basically told them, Go tell the Pharisees that you are healed. But did the healing come at that very moment? No. It says, as they went, they were cleansed. They had to make up in their mind. They had to make the decision, am I healed or am I not? Am I going to trust what he says or am I not? And all of a sudden, they walked a block and a little bit went away. They walked another block and a little bit went away. It was developed. The healing didn't come automatic. It was developed inside them. Jesus was teaching them a principle that in order to have strength and courage, in order to have faith, it's going to be developed. 
the faith, if faith is going to work, you have to act upon it for it to become effective, and that takes commitment. Dare to put action to your faith. What's your action plan? It can be your business, your marriage, what we're talking about tonight with your walk with God. Put together a plan of action to operate in faith and stay committed. Think about the, the, the walls of Jericho when Joshua went marching around them. We know the story. We're like, yeah, hey, hey, he marched around it, tooted his horn, and the walls came tumbling down. Think about Joshua before. He didn't know if the walls were going to come tumbling down or not. God said, go around the wall. He had to operate in what? Faith. He had to operate in courage. You think the first time he walked around the wall, he was pretty excited about it? Yeah. I got rain a word. God's going to do this. You think the third lap? He's probably like, hmm, I wonder if this is going to work out or not. <laughs> like, um, this is kind of crazy. We're walking around this wall. We're going to blow our horns. Uh, this wall that military personnel couldn't even push over. Um, How's this going to work? But he, he stayed committed. And because he was in a place where he was operating out of courage and staying committed, what happened? The walls came down. What's your wall? What's your wall? What's that thing that God's been speaking to you about that may seem a little crazy, but you know it's God speaking to you? What's your wall? Are you willing to be committed to see the wall come down? The first time you cooked a dinner, was it a gourmet meal? No. <laughs> don't look at your spouse, people. Come on, I'm, don't get in trouble. Don't get in trouble. Why not? It had to be developed. We all go through a development process. We're all currently going through a development process. We're all learning about some things. We're all going through some things. But because we're committed, we're going to go through it together. Because we're committed, the other side is the wall comes down. I heard a guy say one time, do not wait to strike till the iron is hot, but make it hot by striking it. Take the initiative. One of the best ways to develop your walk with God is at church. It's getting around other people. It's getting on the victory team. It's getting involved in small groups. It's getting involved in serving. It's getting involved in worshiping. It's getting involved in all these things because now we have people that can help us get through the walk, that can help motivate us and encourage us to be committed. Our development process in our lives that we go through creates tactics. When a lion is being trained how to do what a lion does, mom and dad lion show the, the cub tactics on how to survive. And those tactics are developed. It doesn't say, hey, cub, you're good. Go kill meat today. No, it teaches it. It develops it. It allows it to have a place of training. It allows it to have a place of learning how to do it. That's what the church is. We're a place of training. We're a place of learning how to live the Christian life. We're a place of going through this thing together that the person in front of you is showing you one step ahead. I don't have to know all the answers. I just have to be one step ahead. That's what the church is. We're coming on this journey together, going through this journey, developing our strength and courage so that way we can be committed to what God has called us to do. For us to walk in commitments, for us to be courageous, number one, strength and courage is required. Number two, strength and courage is developed. Number three, write down strength and courage is demonstrated. Required, developed, demonstrated. Hebrews 11, 6, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do you have what it takes to become courageous for the kingdom of God? In other words, do you see yourself the way God already sees you? Some of you have been holding on to a dream that God has given you, 
And it's time that we operate in courage and step out and demonstrate what God has called us to do. Joshua had a wall in front of him, and it came down. Moses had Pharaoh in front of him, and the slaves were seed, or the, the slaves were freed. Noah had skeptics taunting him, and he made it to the shore. Do you have what it takes to stay committed to bring your wall down? I believe we get in a rut, and that rut enables complacency and takes away the desire for us to be courageous. We lose commitments because we don't see the results that we want. We lose commitments because we don't see the results happen quick enough. We lose commitments because people around us make fun of us because we've been trying to lose weight and we lose five pounds and gain seven, so we give up. We lose commitments because we grow lazy and tired. But what if we said we have the attitude of we're going to try one more time? Thomas Edison did what? Create a light bulb. How many times did it take him to figure it out? thousand and one. What if he would have given up on number one thousand? He probably would have given up inventing altogether because if you don't see wins after a while you just kind of give up. Anybody heard of a guy named Fred Astaire? I'm kind of old school. Uh, Fred Astaire the singer? Yeah, okay. Um, he was told he can't sing or act. Don't do it. He became the biggest sensation of his day. Harrison Ford, a little bit newer guy, pulled off his first on-screen appearance and said, don't ever get back on a screen again. He was committed. He had courage. One more time. Dr. Seuss, rejected by 27 different publishers. Dyson Vacuums went through 5,126 prototypes before they actually found one that worked. What if they would have given up? But they all had the desire to stay committed to the conviction one more time. Every day in our Christian walk, you may fail. But tonight I'm asking you, one more time, seek after the presence of God. Your marriage may be in the shams. One more time, commit to that marriage. You may be sick of volunteering at your church. Stay committed one more time. You never know how God's going to use you to change the life of the next person who walks in the door. You've got a story to share and somebody else is needing to hear it. You may be tired of reading your Bible. Go for it one more time. It may be hard to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself 10 or 15 minutes a day to pray and read. Commit to it. One more time. You may be thinking, I hate my job. But you know God put you there, but you're still hating it. One more time. Commit to God. Say, Lord, I'm going to do this for you. Winston Churchill once said, this is probably one of my favorite quotes of all times. History will be kind to me. Because I intend to write it. Mm. Ambition is the path to success. Persistence is the vehicle you arrive in. Let me encourage you tonight to listen to what God's putting in your heart. Listen to those things that God has been teaching you about, telling you about. And understand this, it's going to require strength and courage. It's going to have to have a place where your strength and courage is developed. And you're going to have to demonstrate that strength and courage. When you know God's leading you, stay committed one more time. No matter what's taking place, stay committed one more time. The Bible talks about in Job chapter 4, that the lions of old have teeth that are broken. Why is that? They've got some experience in the battle. They've been going through some stuff, but they didn't give up. They were committed to what they were created to do. It's time for us tonight. 
to go after God one more time. One more time. If you wouldn't mind, uh, close your eyes, bow your heads. No one's looking around, and I want you to be real honest with yourself tonight. Is there something that God has put in your heart that you've given up on? Is there a job promotion that you gave up on yourself because you don't feel like you're qualified to do it? If that's you, we're not going to ask you to come to the front or anything. Just raise your hand before you and God. Saying, yeah, God, I know you've spoken to me about something and I've given up on it. just people live by our commitments. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Tonight, Lord, we ask that you create in us a clean and pure heart. Create in us a desire, an ambition, a drive, a want to to do what you've called us to do. Holy Spirit, prompt in us those things that you've called us to do, that we don't give up on it, but we stay committed. We stay in a place of saying, God, we're committed to what you've put upon our hearts. commit to you tonight, Holy Spirit. Lord, and for every person in this room, I ask you, you stir in their hearts. Stir in our hearts to be more committed to you. Stir in our hearts to seek you with everything that we have. Stir in our hearts, Lord, to press in for more of you in our lives. Stir in our hearts to be in your presence. Lord, we know it takes courage to be a Christian. But Lord, we live by our commitments. And Lord, tonight we commit ourselves to you. We commit our homes to you. We commit our marriages to you. We commit our relationships to you. We commit our jobs to you, our careers. We commit our desires to you. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. tonight, Holy Spirit. That we live committed to the call of God that's upon each of our lives. And Lord, I pray for those ones who don't necessarily know what the calling is that you've put upon their lives, that you begin to reveal it to them. Lord, give us favor. Give us wisdom. Give us a passion for you. Lord, 
make us hot. Build in us a fire that burns bright. That we live lives committed and surrendered to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do you receive it tonight? Do you receive it? Do you receive it? Whenever you live committed lives, you say, Lord, it's all for you. We're going to do this thing for you. We may not know what tomorrow holds, but we're going to be committed to you. No matter what comes our way, we're going to be committed to you. No matter what the circumstance and situation looks like, we're going to be committed to you. So therefore, whatever we go through tomorrow doesn't matter. We live committed lives to Jesus. Let's give God a big hand of praise. Lord, we give you praise. Come on. You can do better than that. Come on. Come on. We worship you, Lord. so somber but I'm going to be real honest. I can be raw with you guys you guys are my family about halfway through there I felt the presence of God hit my back I just felt it and I can't I can't get I don't I can't shake it and so I apologize I, I was going to just pump you guys up and motivate you and all of a sudden it just it just pressed me down I think it's because the Lord wants to say it's time we commit ourselves in a new way. It's time we've been playing a game. We've been giving God 10%, 20%, 30% of our lives. He's saying, will you give it all to me? I am more hungry for God now than I've ever been. Are you? If not, it's time we get committed. If you do need prayer tonight uh, for anything, you just want someone to pray with you, whenever we dismiss, dismiss here in about five seconds, come up here. I'd love to pray with you. If not, you guys go and be blessed and live committed lives to Jesus. And we'll see you Sunday hearing testimonies of how we stay committed to Jesus. Come on. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you Sunday morning, 9, 30, 11. Sign up for the rafting if you're a man and all that good stuff. Go to the Connection Center. Thank you so much for being here.